Social media platforms are changing the way farming is practiced in Kenya. This is the story as being told by the farmers themselves as they experience life on social media. I'm a good storyteller. A way that I've found uh, very effective of telling story is through videos. What we do, when you reach at this section, we use the soil that is inside the tunnel. If it's not enough, you can get some few soil from, from above there. People don't read stories, but they can listen stories and relate to them. So that's why I chose YouTube as one of the channels in order to tell my story. Each and every time I get a, a need box of a positive response of my YouTube or my Facebook, I know that a client that I've earned. So the better the video, the many the clients that I get from that. I'm an artist and a trained teacher. I taught art for over 30 years, but in between teaching, my heart has always been in farming. I wanted to keep up with what's current in farming because even though I had farmed 20 years, things have changed even in Kenya. So the first thing that I did was join any farming forum that I could find. I used to farm as a part-time alongside accounting, but then I moved fully to the farm and left the accounting. As I'm learning, I provide other farmers with information. So I came up with a Facebook page, it's called Farmers Hub, that I'm trying to give people who are interested in farming the right information. And for those who would like to have an offline meeting, I invite them to my farm to see what I've been posting and people can come here for training. On Facebook, I looked for forums where I was going to extend my learning. I have found some of them are really, really good. There's one called Digital Farmers of Kenya. And I'm, that's the first thing that I open every morning when I wake up because somebody is asking a question or somebody is suggesting something and there's a lot of learning to do. When I started farming, I realized that my fellow farmers on either side of me were doing the same old, same old things. It's maize, it's beans, it's maize, it's beans. On my farm, I've got fruit trees, I've got crops like asparagus, I've got all kinds of things going on. You know, at first I didn't see agriculture as a, a way of earning source of income. I thought agriculture was just for people in the rural areas. So I decided to go through the social media pages. I would see people posting their produces. It motivated me to venture into farming so that uh, at least I can have a story of my own to tell and also encourage them that even the youths can do the farming themselves. <laughs> Young Farmers Forum is a group on WhatsApp which was created back in 2015 and the purpose was mostly to interact with farmers from different regions in Kenya. The group is so special to me because I have grown in that group. We were able to bring together experts who would guide us on specifics on each crops, what to do in case of a disease, even where to sell sometimes they would make recommendations. Like that time, there were farmers who were selling their produce as far as Mombasa, Kisi, Kakamega. And us, we only knew market here in uh, Dika where we were farming. And we, that's when I knew, ah, you can still farm and sell your produce as far as Mombasa. And you will not go to the market. You just send your truck, they send you money. And that's it. I sell onions and potatoes and other agricultural products on my Instagram page. What inspired me to use Instagram as my main platform is the ad feature on Instagram. Or also I saw like other people selling their products. If they can do such and earn a living, why can't I also do such? We are in Kangemi. Uh, Kangemi is in Nairobi County. I do fresh groceries which basically I source from farms and from middlemen and then uh, we sell to clients who come here and some of them we do deliveries. WhatsApp has been very very instrumental to me. Without it 
I'll be way back. I'll be down. When I was not on social media, I would grow my tomatoes. Then I would again take a mat and go to the thicker and go and look for brokers who would later now buy my produce. They know I am desperate. I have nowhere else to sell. They will exploit me. But when I am on social media, I'm able to, to tell people, oh, my tomatoes are ready. I can ask, for example, how much is tomatoes retailing in your location? And I find they are selling at 4,000. And so I can no longer go to my broker who used to exploit me. So social media has really opened up the market. The social media that I'm using has brought farming and selling and made it like a small village where you can get whatever you want at any time that you need it. This is the future for the farmers and the, the, the marketers that want to succeed in this industry. There are many instances when I would receive nude photos from a lot of men. It just pissed me off, so I just couldn't bear with it, so I just deleted the Facebook account. One of the biggest problems that we have, and it really is an African problem, is that the land usually belongs to the man. Unless you're a single woman and you would bought your own land and you have your own title, if you're a married woman like me, you'll find that your husband has more say with how the title deed can be used or not. So you're farming the land, yes, but the land doesn't really technically belong to you because you can't take that title deed and go to the bank and use it as collateral. So women in Africa in general and Kenya in specifically have problem accessing finance. Our one is a WhatsApp group, which is a women's network um, where they believe in really educating women in the best practices in farming. So our one is working with the banks to find alternative ways we can come in together as a group to be financed without those bits of paper that hinder our progress. We are having a large number of women joining agriculture and speaking about it because we had people who were in agriculture but they were not speaking about it because the society judged their woman. I'm encouraging women and telling them it is possible you can do this and you find in my inbox women are telling me I love what you're doing. I love that the fact that you're a woman and you're doing this and being a successful female farmer online in Kenya you feel like a star. I feel like a star. I'm a star that's shining to the people who want to engage in farming especially women. An order came through today. It came in through WhatsApp. So when it comes in through WhatsApp, I get the items. I have a delivery book, an invoice book. So I put them down, then I start sourcing them and then I'll use the same same WhatsApp, take pictures of the invoice and the delivery note, and then send the person. So when the goods arrive there, they send me the money. Of course, it's, it's a trust thing, which grows with time. The challenges I've faced while using Instagram are bullying. Some people will just come in, in your comment section and they will say that the product is fake or it's a scam and you've never interacted with them. The payment process is kind of hard considering I have to take the risk and send the product via my rider. They're supposed to send me or give the rider the cash. So sometimes you can send them and there's no one to pick and you have no one to blame. You cannot do anything. What we can learn from listening to these stories is that social agriculture is a vital part of the future but there's much improvement needed. Social media platforms could do a lot more to verify identity and prevent bullying and misinformation. Government and platforms could provide better education on how to use social media effectively. And also banks and other lending institutions should make access to credit easier, especially for young people and women.